welcome to Outside Xbox. This is Show of the Week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week I used my time wisely in Dying Light by kicking a box 63 times to get a weapon blueprint. Ah, shit. No, we're not sitting through all of that again. Oh, uh, but that's pretty much all I had planned. You must have done something else this week. Oh, I was also playing the first instalment of Resident Evil Revelations 2, the new episodic Resident Evil game which started up this week. It's set between Resident Evil 5, that's the one where Chris Redfield uppercuts a boulder into some lava, and Resident Evil 6, that's the one with a guy in it called Piers Nivens. Piers. Piers Nivens? Never heard of you. And follows the adventures of series favourites Claire Redfield and Barry Burton. As the episode kicks off, Claire is, for once, enjoying some downtime at a party, I think? There's a buffet and zero zombies anyway, so this counts as the nicest place ever seen in a Resident Evil game. This being Claire though, she is almost immediately kidnapped and chucked into a penal colony on a remote island. A penal colony full of zombies. So far, so code Veronica. But she's not alone. Joining her for prison fun times is Moira Burton, daughter of Barry Burton, who isn't great in combat but does have a handy flashlight. Guess I'm on my duty. The other half of episode 1 focuses on Barry, who races to the island hoping to rescue his daughter. Luckily, her and Claire have already done a pretty good job of rescuing themselves, Claire being handy with a gun, and Moira having weaponized swearing. I mean, what in a moist barrel of fun is so Barry ends up exploring the place with a mysterious little girl called Natalia Corder who can point at things, sense enemies, and beam zombies over the head with a brick. She's pretty useful to have around, all things considered. <laughs> In addition to the story mode, Revelations 2 has Raid Mode, in which two players can blast their way through a selection of locations taken from the series, unlocking new equipment and bonuses as they go. There are also Dancer Modes, reason enough to give it a go, surely. Revelations 2 brings to mind the evil within with its faster, more aggressive zombies covered in barbed wire and pipes, while the gloomy, penal colony setting recalls Co Veronica. The two storylines overlap in various ways too, with Barry making his way through the same locations as Claire and Moira some considerable time later, in the style of Resident Evil 2. That said, it holds on to Resident Evil's current baffling obsession with annoying AI partners, though thankfully no one is anywhere near as enervating as Jackass and Grinder from Revelations 1, or God forbid, Jessica. My feet are killing me. Kinda busy right now, Jess. Revelations 2 has four episodes on the way to be released weekly and then bundled into a disc version in mid-March. Episode 1 of Resident Evil Revelations 2 is available now, or you can grab the Season Pass, which includes two bonus episodes. Not much is yet known about the later episodes, but each episode title is a reference to the work of harrowing author Franz Kafka, so plenty of laughs, I expect. Are you okay? Yeah, I was almost a Claire sandwich. Ugh. Does Barry tell everyone that story? So it's got Barry Burton in it, remember him, and also Claire Redfield, remember her? Yeah, I remember them all. I remember everything about Resident Evil. All right. What was the name of Raccoon City's Chief of Police? Brian Irons. What was Chris Redfield's ID number? 0738. What four forgotten Resident Evil games should they remaster next? Jill, this is no longer useful to Forrest. We don't know what's going to happen. Take it with you. Resident Evil HD Remaster was the best-selling day one title ever on the PlayStation Network. It was also the best-selling digital title ever for Resident Evil publisher Capcom. So, if you were Capcom, what would you be doing right now? That's right, frantically remastering every old Resident Evil game in existence. But as there have been approximately 11,000 Resident Evil games, that could take a while. If I were you, Capcom, I would stick to these four. <laughs> Following hot on the heels of the GameCube remake of Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil Zero came out eight months later at the end of 2002. It's a prequel set one day before the original Resident Evil that fleshes out the story of the ill-fated Bravo team, who you'll remember from the remake as being variously pecked to death by crows, fanged to death by giant snakes, and eaten to death by zombies. Alright everyone, let's separate and survey the area. Our friend is brutal and ruthless. Keep your guard up! <laughs> They're all doomed. In the series' quest for things that are like mansions but not mansions, the early part of the game is set on an ornate luxury train, which is hugely atmospheric. It was also the first Resident Evil game to introduce a partner character who you could switch to who, crucially, wasn't unbearable. Been fantasizing about me, have you? Alright, he was at first, but he got better. It also contained memorable monsters, like this guy made entirely out of leeches, genuinely revealing backstory that explained many of the mysteries of the first game, and introduced the ability to drop items on the floor and pick them up later instead of having to store everything in boxes the whole time. You know, like a normal human being. It's gonna be dangerous from here on in. 
Why don't we cooperate? The only thing it didn't explain was how Rebecca was so useless in the original Resident Evil despite having spent the entire previous day blasting away leech monsters with shotguns. Too polite and didn't want to show Chris up, probably. I could shoot, you know. What are you doing? What the hell was that? Released for the PlayStation 2 in 2004, Resident Evil Outbreak and its expansion sequel Outbreak File 2 were the first Resident Evil games to introduce co-op. Set during the Raccoon City outbreak seen in Resident Evil 2 and 3, the Outbreak games follow a group of survivors in different scenarios throughout the city, including a hospital, a burning hotel and a zoo full of zombie animals, including a goddamn zombie elephant, the ultimate weapon. The game was also unique in that the characters were all regular Joes, a journalist, a student, a security guard, a plumber, even a star's reject. Think of it like Resident Evil meets Left 4 Dead with a co-op group of everyday survivors fighting their way through scenario-based zombie campaigns. Sadly, Outbreak was ahead of its time. Capcom weren't even able to get European servers up and running for the game, so anyone wanting to play Outbreak in Europe had to do it on their own, which completely defeats the point. That said, fans of the series resurrected the servers in Japan last year, so there are still people who want to play an Outbreak game together. Time for a remaster, maybe, please? I'll distract the monster while you run after Morpheus. Got it! Alright, monster. It's payback time. Resident Evil Revelations 1 wasn't the first Resi game to be set on an ocean liner. Nor was this, in fact, but we'll get to that in a second. Resident Evil Dead Aim was set on an umbrella-owned ship called the Spencer Rain and had a ludicrously over-the-top plot involving government conspiracies, explosions and villains who inject themselves with a T-virus at the first sign of trouble, like all good Resident Evil games. I'll never die. <laughs> What was unique about Dead Aim was that although it was part of the Gun Survivor series of light gun games, it let you move around like a traditional Resident Evil game, so you could explore, find secrets and generally go where you wanted to. When you needed to shoot something, the game would switch to first person and you could blast away with your light gun controller and actually have some control over whether you got headshots for once. <laughs> It was still a bit mechanically awkward, yes, and short for a Resident Evil game, but Dead Aim is definitely the standout Resi light gun game, and those have got to be due at least an ironic renaissance soon. That aforementioned first Resident Evil game set on a cruise liner was released for the Game Boy Color in 2001. Resident Evil Gaiden starred Barry Burton and Leon Kennedy on board the ocean liner Starlight, which is in the grip of an outbreak of the T-Virus. Presented from an isometric third-person view, Resident Evil Gaiden switches into first-person for shooting, much like Dead Aim, although here you have to stop a moving cursor in the right spot to land a successful shot, like you're playing Mario Golf or something. My favourite thing about this is the utterly bonkers plot, in which shape-shifting monsters lead to one of those excellent I don't know which one to shoot moments I always enjoy. In fact, now that I think about it, Barry spends most of his time in Gaiden accompanied by a psychic little girl who can sense when monsters are nearby. Wait a minute! Is Revelations 2 already an HD remaster of Resident Evil Gaiden? And you thought we wouldn't notice Capcom. For shame. Now it's time to see what you've been saying in the YouTube comments and sending your dog to bark at us. <laughs> More kids stuck down the well. We're kind of busy reading the comments. No, you suck at Halo 5. Jeez. First up, your comments on last week's show about the exploding Nazi zombies of Zombie Army Trilogy. What about this guy on the floor? Is he a zombie? I don't know, I feel bad. Oh, Mike. United with Andy and his inability to get the name of the game right, Funny Fail 101 says, I thought the game was called Zombie Ombie Trilogy until the title popped up on screen three minutes in. That would have been a pretty sweet name, actually. It certainly would have been more memorable and saved people like Ian McCallum problems like this. I honestly left this video to watch more of that zombie game and had already forgotten the name. My end result was Zombie Nation 3. Close enough. Jesse Clark, meanwhile, thinks there's something up with the safe house's reactions, saying, Shoot the hostages and wounded, nobody panics. Kick a guy in the pants, everyone loses their minds. This guy here examining light bulbs. I'm gonna kick. Oh, oh. Oh, did you make him angry? Uh oh. 
Oh, you Billy. Speaking of stupid overreactions, here's Hi Hatchie from Tekken. It's not clear what's with Hi Hatchie's obsession with space murder, but here he is again at the end of Tekken 6, trying to jettison his son and grandson from a space station into the deadly indifferent vacuum of space. It turns out that's not even all the weirdest stuff that Hi Hatchie's ever done, as Seventh Sign points out. Don't forget in Tekken 6, when Lars tried to shoot Hi Hatchie in the head with a revolver, Hi Hatchie headbutted the bullet. WTF, that was weird. <laughs> Liam Dooley's favourite, I guess, has to be when he's wearing a f***ing nappy in Tekken 4. And that was before the rejuvenation potion. Some things can't be unseen. Ah, you didn't have to show it. Misery loves company. Finally, Aaron Palumbo says, we should call these moments hijinks. Nice. Finally this week, your comments on this video about nobodies whose lives were ruined by video game protagonists. But spare a thought for the ordinary, everyday people your protagonist encounters along the way. They're the ones who have to deal with the unintended consequences of all that reckless heroing. Angry JT disagrees with one of our choices, saying, Silly this channel, Ricky was one of the best crew members. Level him up from the first heist and you got a 4% take super hacker. Yeah, a 4% take super hacker that does this all the time. <laughs> Think of the money, think of the money. Meanwhile, underwater werewolf amphibious lycanthrope says, ship captain from God of War? Thank you! Thank the gods you came back for me! I didn't come back for you. No! <laughs> oh yeah, that'll teach you ship captain. Finally, RJ Finn would like to suggest, all of the people you hack in watchdogs. Hey, I needed that money more than all those people with worthy jobs and terrible afflictions. Mm-hmm. Don't push your doggies back. You stall him while I uh, get out of here. All right. Hey, Hatchie. Are you sure? I've been saying hi, Hatchie, all this time. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. And don't forget your weekly like button maintenance. You can check the button is still working by pressing it right now. That seems yep. to be fine. Seems to be yeah, working, good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. All right, good. Uh, you want to go for lunch? Uh, yeah, in a minute. Mike said if I jump on this manhole cover in Dying Light 8,400 times, I get a secret gun sword, grenade sword laser. How many times have you jumped on it so far? Oh, I've lost count. I better start again. Yeah, I'll leave you to it.